We finally made it to our family and friends in North Carolina, and we're so appreciative of Greg and Karen's hospitality while we stayed on their property for the first few days. Okay, so I'm not sure whether you guys can see this, but the lake has a monster. Oh my goodness. They say it's a carp, but it's pretty long. The only way for YouTube to know that you're enjoying this video is for you to hit that like button. And why don't you go ahead and subscribe while you're at it. The campground at Jordan Lake was our home for the next 10 days where we enjoyed a long break with our son and his beautiful family. We all enjoyed our time on the lake. We spotted bald eagles but sadly could not get a good shot but we spent many hours watching them along with turkey vultures, osprey and blue herons. Even though we were taking a couple of weeks away from the camera, we couldn't help filming a couple of interesting locations we thought you'd enjoy. So well, here we are. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. We are at the something. Where are we at, Kat? We are at the Duke Homestead, which was a tobacco plantation. Now we're going to go find out so I can talk more intelligently about it. Have a look, what's this? Tobacco seeds are very small with about 300,000 in each ounce. Look how tiny they are. Yeah, I'll put my finger there. You guys see, look at that. Now, this is uh, pretty interesting the, the, the history of tobacco, and at, pretty much after the Civil War, they're talking about how most people were just sharecroppers, poor people, poor white people, ex slaves, and so on. Uh, but it all started by the Dukes of Durham. Continuous cigarette and it was cut with sharp knives. Come on here. Look at this. The paper rolled these cigarettes so it came through the loops here. Rolled these cigarettes like this and then they would get cut. Over here on this side. Over and here stack. and then this, this very happy looking lady right here would stack them up here to then put them into packs. There were so many of these machines and factories in this area, they had to have a huge factory just to make the belts that go on this equipment. All wow. this equipment is run with belts and it's a whole manu belt manufacturing plant. Just to serve this industry. They had to have it here. See, wow. this, this belt like this right here, it's like the conveyor belts or the, oh, belt, right. the belt that's running that this runs is these. a belt here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gosh, you don't even think about that, do you? It's not just the tobacco industry, it's all of the industries Again, around it that the then supported the tobacco industry. You know, we don't advocate smoking or chewing or any of that stuff, but the history is very interesting. Pride of Durham smoking tobacco, genuine Bull Durham smoking tobacco. So Bull Durham is the competition to Duke. Some of the advertising ideas and slogans were hilarious, especially this one. It's a cartoon that shows you if you smoke their tobacco, not only will you look better, but you'll also get a bride. Oh, 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 I got a particular kick out of this ad for the Chesterfields. Meerschaum is a clay-like substance found mainly in Turkey that is easily carved into these works of art. A replica of the Liberty Bell made from tobacco. Oh, okay. So this is the replica of one that's made of tobacco. The actual one is in the Smithsonian Institute. It was made by R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. It contains enough tobacco to manufacture 150,000 cigarettes and weighs over 300 pounds. found this museum to be small, but really quite interesting. Number one is this barn. 
It's a tobacco curing barn from 1870. Traditionally, farmers hand harvested tobacco leaves, brought them to the curing barn, and tied the leaves in small bundles to tobacco sticks with twine. The sticks were then hung throughout the barn on poles and cured for nearly a week. We to watched a high of 180 degrees. A bug just landed right on top of the camera. Oh my goodness, hold on, you gotta see this. They would make the coals over here, then put the coals down here in this trough. And oh, wow. Pipe the heat throughout the building. Can you go in here, do you think? There's tobacco hanging right here, see? This barn holds 550 tobacco sticks, which oh. is about half an acre. This is the tobacco stick. So the tobacco is being strung on these sticks and then they would be spaced out like this to dry. And then this is the trough where the charcoal would be. And you can see the uh, metal tubing that goes all the way around to keep the heat in here. Gosh, it must have been sweltering. The gentleman we watched on the video uh, said that as a young man, he would sleep in here. He would have to stay here from Tuesday night through Friday while the tobacco cured. And he would only go home Saturday night, Sunday night, and Monday night. So a young man, he was probably 15, 16, and would sleep in there where it had to be kept at a constant high temperature to dry and cure this tobacco. It needs to get 180, yeah. 180. So this poor young man, every time the but fire went down, he would have to get up all night. They used the packing house after they took the tobacco out of the curing house. It was very brittle and dry. So they would bring it here and put it in this basement that's half underground and very wet down below. And they'd leave it overnight. And when they come back the next day, it, was the, it would be humidified and very soft and pliable. Oh, humidified, like a humidor. Have all this historical planting equipment. I like this because the driver sat here and then the two people planting sat here with their backs to what they were doing, planting from these boxes right here. It's pretty cool. So the first tobacco factory is to the right over here. Reconstruction of the corn crib in which Washington Duke first started his manufacturing of smoking tobacco. It was in 1865 and his children helped him and the company was called Duke and Sons. This is the third tobacco factory that Duke had and this is the first one that used machine rolled cigarettes in 1884 to, and 1890. He created the American Tobacco Company. So the Duke House, which is up here, was built for his second wife in 1852, and it was finished in about 1860. And it looks the same oh, as it from 1860. This is our first historic stop in Durham and the next we are heading to the chapel at Duke University. Oh, that's going to be fun. I know, right? And you can see the connection because we are at the Duke Homestead. Ta-da! <laughs> all right, so I love old buildings, history, all that kind of stuff. Kevin, not so much. <laughs> so he can put up with them for about a couple of hours. Maybe, maybe some more. And then if I say, well, let's go to another, I'd like, no, no, enough of the old buildings. Just as I start to record, the sun goes in and makes it a little gloomy and dark and interesting. So that's kind of cool. in here the first thing that hits you is the organ is right here in this huge hallway with these beautiful stained glass windows
The architecture and design of this chapel was incredible. It was so light inside due to the two-story stained glass windows. It was breathtakingly beautiful. In a side chapel, where the baptismal is located, three generations of the Duke family are laid to rest. There is also a second, much smaller organ within this side chapel. Does anybody else get the national treasure vibes being in a crypt, where there are actual burial places? Here we are at the center of Duke University. The chapel's this way. And as we look this way, there's Kat. Hello. Down the quad, all these beautiful buildings that were built by the same architect. And there's a little plaque here to him that says, if you want to see his monument, just look around you. They're all here. What do you have to say? Well, that was the chapel that we just went into, but these are the actual study halls and academic buildings for the university. But these are also the residences for some of the staff and the students. And it looks like Hogwarts, it's beautiful. <laughs> it reminds me very much of places like Oxford and Cambridge. Hello, Mr. Squirrel. Hi, buddy. How are you doing? Look at him jump. Wow. These are the student residence halls. <laughs> This one's got his finger on his chin. This one's eating his own arm. We had so much fun exploring just a small part of Durham's history. Join us next week as we head to a Civil War Fort Fisher, home of the largest amphibious attack on US soil until World War II. And we also explore the historic city of Wilmington. Until then, we'll see you on the trail. <laughs>